after studying this module, you shall be able to know about the toxins of microbial origin, general introduction of certain microbial toxins and the forensic significance of food poisoning. Corresponding to the poisons originated from the plant and animals, the microbial poisons also belong to the class organic poisons which are produced by microscopic organisms. These microbial toxins are generally introduced in the food chain by the diet of any organism and perhaps termed as food poisoning evolved at that moment only. Food poisoning or the food born illness contains all the illnesses resulting from ingestion of food containing bacterial products, toxins, viruses, prions or parasites or acute gastroenteritis due to bacterial infection of food or drink. The contamination may result from improper handling, preparation or storage of food. Food poisoning can occur in many ways, it may be isolated or may constitute an epidemic. The latter stiffens with medico-social implications and necessitates prompt reporting to public health authorities who must take the effective steps to contain the epidemic. Food-borne illnesses are among the commonest health problems encountered worldwide and are particularly rampant in third world countries such as India mainly due to the relative lack of sanitation and public hygiene. Next we will study about the forensic issues. Toxins originated from the microorganisms has a very important role in forensic science as the food borne illness is also encountered frequently in form of accidental poisoning and the task of the forensic scientist is to ascertain the nature of death and of the detection of the causing agent. Food borne illness can also result by adding the pesticides or the medicines to food or by accidentally consuming naturally poisonous substances like the poisonous mushrooms or fish. Contact between food and pest especially the rodents, flies and cockroaches are a further cause of contamination of food. All the cases of microbial poisoning reported are mainly due to accidental poisoning. Though botulinum toxin could possibly serve as a potent homicidal poison, its use for nefarious purposes has fortunately been non-existent so far. Most cases of food borne botulism result from eating improperly preserved home canned foods and are virtually confused to western countries even though some incidents have recently been reported from Iran, Russia, Japan and even India. Next we will study about the classification of microbial toxins. Starting with the first we have the toxins of bacterial origin. The impact of pathogenic bacteria on human health mostly if not always results from their ability to produce microbial toxins. Therefore, a selection has been made of three commonest potent bacterial toxins. Tetanus toxin, botulinum toxin and verotoxin. The former two are related neurotoxic proteins produced by several clostridium strains while the verotoxin is produced by certain Escherichia coli strains. Bacteria may also be the source of toxins previously attributed to other organisms such as the tetrodotoxin that is the TTX which is found in puffer fish but is most probably produced by commensal microorganisms. Bacterial food poisoning is most frequently caused by Staphylococcus followed by Colostridium perfringens, Salmonella, Shigella and streptococcus in descending order of frequency. Starting with the first we have the Colostridium species. The genus Colostridium consists of gram positive anaerobic spore forming bacilli which are responsible for three major diseases that is tetanus or the Colostridium tetani, gas gangrene 
or Colostridium perfringens, Colostridium septicum and Colostridium novi and also Colostridium histolyticum and Colostridium felix etc. And food poisoning caused by the Colostridium botulinum, Colostridium perfringens. In addition, the acute colitis can result from infection with Colostridium difficile. Colostridium botulinum is a strictly anaerobic, spore-forming, gram-positive, rod-shaped bacteria that elaborates a potent exotoxin. The spores are capable of tolerating temperatures of 100 degrees Celsius for hours, whereas the moist heat at 120 degrees centigrade usually destroys them. Colostridium botulinum elaborates a powerful exotoxin which is produced intracellularly and is released only on the death and autolysis of the organism. It is probably the most powerful toxin known to man. The lethal dose for human beings is just 1 to 2 mcg or 1 pg per kg. It is a neurotoxin and despite its potency acts slowly taking several hours to kill. Based on the animal data, the lethal dose in a 70 kilogram human would be approximately 0.09 to 0.15 mcg intravenous or intramuscular. The estimated lethal inhalation dose in a 70 kilogram human is said to be 0.70 to 0.90 micrograms. The botulinum toxin enters the preganglionic nerve terminal by endocytosis and binds rapidly and irreversibly to the cell membrane. Once inside the cell, it inhibits the calcium dependent exocytosis thereby preventing release of acetylcholine and resulting in the presynaptic blockade. The toxin acts as a zinc dependent endoprotease to cleave the polypeptides that are essential for exocytosis. This diminution of presynaptic function interferes with the cholinergic transmission at all acetylcholine dependent synapses in the peripheral nervous system. There is no effect on the central nervous system or on the axonal conduction. Next are the Bacillus species. Bacillus cereus, an endemic, soil dwelling, gram positive, rod shaped, beta hemolytic bacterium that is well known to cause the food borne illness. It is a facultative acrobe and, like other members of the genus Bacillus, can produce protective endospores that are resistant to extremes of temperature. Various strains have been shown to produce seven different toxins. The common sources are first is the emetic form that is the fried and cooked rice, pasta, pastry and noodles and second is the diarrheal form that is meat and vegetables. Other potential sources of infection include spices, pasteurized fresh, or powdered milk and the reconstituted milk based infant formula. Toxins produced by this bacteria are highly stable toxin ceruloid which has a ring structure consisting of four amino and or the oxy acids in the emetic form whereas heat and acid labile enterotoxin that is a protein that is sensitive to proteolytic enzymes in the diarrheal form. Next are the Staphylococcus species. It is said to be the commonest cause of bacterial food poisoning. The common sources are previously cooked proteinaceous food that is meat, fish, milk and milk products. Staphylococcal toxins are formed within a few hours when the food is kept at a room temperature. Pasteurizing milk will kill the bacteria but unfortunately will not activate all the toxins. The toxins are relatively heat stable enterotoxins that is including A, B, C13, D, E and H. The commonest type is A. Enterotoxin B, a pyrogenic toxin also commonly causes food poisoning after ingestion of improperly prepared or handled food material. It causes a significantly different clinical syndrome when inhaled 
than when ingested. The toxin is extremely potent and stable and may be used as a bioterrorism agent. Only a small amount of toxin that is approximately 200 nanograms is required to cause the clinical illness. However, large number of organisms may be present in food in order to produce enough enterotoxin to cause an illness that is 106 organisms per gram or more. Aerosol incapacitating dose amounts to about 30 nanograms per person while the lethal dose is approximately 1.7 micrograms per person. Next is the Salmonella species. Salmonella species are motile, gram-negative, rod-shaped bacteria. They grow both aerobically and anaerobically at an optimum temperature of 37 degrees Celsius, that is, ranging from 7 to 48 degrees centigrade and at a pH between 4 to 8. They are readily killed by heat, that is, at 71.7 degrees centigrade for 15 seconds and acid but are resistant to growth, freezing and drying, especially in the presence of proteins. Food poisoning that is Salmonella enterocolitis can be caused by all the Salmonellae except Salmonella typhi which causes typhoid or enteric fever. Outbreaks of Salmonella infections may be associated with multiple drug resistant strains. Household pets like chicks, turtles, iguanas and other reptiles are known to harbor salmonellae and can transmit the microorganisms to household contacts. Cats may be fecal carriers of salmonella without displaying the clinical signs. The incidence ranges from 1 to 18 percent of cats and the toxins may be responsible in case of salmonella poisoning as the enterotoxin. Next is the Shigella species. Shigella microbes include the non-motile gram-negative rods shaped bacteria that have the same morphological and biochemical characteristics as E. coli or the Escherichia coli. The common species of Shigella responsible for food poisoning include Shigella dysentriae, Shigella flinerxi, Shigella boidi and Shigella sonii. The most severe form of infection is associated with Shigella dysenteriae serotype. Case fatality rates range from 5 to 15 percent. The toxins of Shigella elaborate an enterotoxin. It seems to be much less important in pathogenesis than the ability of the bacillus to penetrate and multiply in the colonic mucosa. Next are the Vibrio species. Vibrio cholerae is responsible for causing cholera while several other species are known to cause the shellfish associated outbreaks of gastroenteritis. The main toxin choleragen or the cholera toxin or CT is a heat labile molecule consisting of 1A and 5B subunits. The former is the active subunit and after being transported into the enterocytes dissociates into two fragments that is A1 and A2. The A1 fragment causes prolonged activation of cellular adenylate cyclate and the accumulation of C amp leading to outpouring into the small intestinal lumen of large quantities of water and electrolytes and the consequent watery diarrhea. Next in line is the Escherichia coli or E. coli. Several strains of the common intestinal bacterium that is E. coli may cause diarrheal disease in man or the human beings. One such strain which occurs naturally in the gut of cattle and other animals produces verotoxin or verocytotoxin. A potent cytotoxin. This E. coli strain usually referred to as the verotoxin producing E. coli or the VTEC. Next we will study about the toxins of fungal origin. 
given the large number of fungal species remarkably only a very few species are deadly poisonous after ingestion a more insidious risk of human comes from various fungi that produce toxins on food of the particular importance are the fungal species that produce the mycotoxins mycotoxins are the name given to a group of potentially toxic substances produced by certain fungal species that grow on food crops or the pre or post harvest mycotoxins which have given rise to most concerns in terms of risk to health include the aflatoxins ocratoxins deoxyvinylol fumonosins trichothecenes and the ergot alkaloids next studying about the mushrooms the term mushroom actually refers to the reproductive portion of a fungus which grows up from the underground mycelium that is mass of filaments or the hyphae constituting the vegetative portion of the fungus of the numerous species of mushrooms less than 5% are poisonous while many are edible and are very popular in western and chinese cuisine all toxic mushrooms belong to two divisions that is basidiomycetes and ascomycetes depending on the nature of the toxin present the mushrooms can be classified into several groups and whose examples include amenita species including the a phalloids a virosa a hesporegra a hygroscopica a sub alicia a tunifolia a warna and a ocreata next are the gallinarina species starting with the first we have g autumnalis g marginata g salcipis and g venenata next are the lepiota species starting with l castinia l helviola l chlorophyllum l zosrandi l sub inercata and l brunior carta the toxins present in mushrooms are amatoxins phallotoxins and virotoxins which are all cyclopeptides nine amatoxins have been identified yet and which are alpha beta gamma and epsilon amanitins amanulin amanulinic acid proamanulin and amanin amanitins are the most toxic compounds phallotoxins are bicycling heptapeptides seven compounds have been identified that is phalloidin phalloin prophalloin phallicin phallacin and phallicidin and phallicin five virotoxins that is the monocycling heptapeptides have been isolated from amanita virosa in this table we have shown some of the naturally occurring mycotoxins on one column we have the mycotoxins and on another column we have shown the source of fungi starting with aflatoxin the source of fungi is aspergillus flavus or a parasiticus next is alternariol the source is alternaria tenuis or a dosi next mycotoxin is cretinin and the source is penicillium citrinum and p viridacetum next mycotoxin is ergot alkaloids and the source is claviceps sps aspergillus sps and penicillium sps next is kojic acid whose source is aspergillus flavus or a orizae next is ocratoxin a and the sources are aspergillus ochreus penicillium viridicatum and p cyclopium next is penicillic acid whose source is aspergillus clavatus and penicillium puberitum next mycotoxin is pr toxin whose source is penicillium roqueforti next is isterigmatocystin 
and the sources are Aspergillus versicolor, A. flavus, A. ruber and Penicillium luteum. Next mycotoxin is tenunosic acid and the sources are Alternaria tineus, A. tamari, Saphirostidales sps, Pyrecularia aurisiae and Foma sorgiana. Next is trichothecenes and the sources are Fusarium roseum, F. trinictum and F. nivale. And lastly, Z. ralinol and the sources are Fusarium roseum, F. monoliform, F. nivale and F. oxys porum. Now we will study about the mode of action. Mushrooms belonging to this group have no characteristic taste or smell. The color varies with the climate, soil and age of the mushroom. Identification is based on the presence of white gills underneath the cap, an annulus at the top of the stalk and a vulva at its base. Specimens cut off at the ground level may be misidentified. The solen base is seen only when the entire fruiting body is dug out of the ground. Of all the toxins, the phalloidin appears to be the most rapid acting while the amanitin causes more delayed manifestations. Phalloidin interrupts with the actin polymerization and impairs the cell membrane function but has a limited absorption and therefore toxicity. Phalloidin binds to the actin F that is the filamentous polymer of the plasma membranes and hence increases the permeability of the plasma membranes of hepatocytes. Hematotoxins are more potent and can cause substantial hepatic, renal and central nervous system damage. In vitro studies indicate that the alpha amanitin is cytotoxic on the basis of its interference with the RNA polymerase 2. Preventing the transcription of DNA Target organs are those with the highest rate of cell turnover GI tract epithelium, liver hepatocytes and kidneys Cells with the highest rate of multiplication such as the intestinal mucosa are injured first followed by the liver and kidneys Now students we will study about some notable microbial toxins. Starting with the first we have the aflatoxins. Aflatoxins are toxic metabolites produced by certain fungi in or on the foods and feeds. They are probably the best known and most intensively researched mycotoxins in the world. Aflatoxins have been associated with various diseases such as the aflatotoxicosis in livestock domestic animals and humans throughout the world. They are composed of highly substituted coumarin compounds that contain a fused dihydrofurfuran configuration. A dozen or more of these compounds have been identified. Starting with the first, we have the aflatotoxin, aflatoxin B1, aflatoxin B2, aflatoxin B2A, aflatoxin B3, aflatoxin G1, aflatoxin G2, Aflatoxin G2A, Aflatoxin M1, Aflatoxin M2, Aflatoxin P and Aflatoxin T2. The aflatoxins are highly fluorescent. The B refers to blue, the G signifies green fluorescence while the M aflatoxins are fungal metabolites present in milk and the T compounds are found in tobacco. Most of them are associated with various types of liver damage. Aflatoxin B1 is a potent hepatotoxin and carcinogen. Next are the amanitin. Among the various families of mushroom, the true poisonous mushrooms are of the genus Amanita. Not all the members of this genus are highly poisonous, but Amanita phylloids the green death cap mushroom contains a variety of compounds that are toxic for the mammalian organisms. In this group, the amatotoxins and the phallotoxins are two families of cyclic peptides that act on the cytoplasmic or the nuclear cell components. The amatotoxins 
one of which is alpha aminitin inhibit the transcription of eukaryotic cells when present in nanomolar concentrations. Alpha amanitin is the major toxic bicyclic octapeptide of the amanita phalloids mushroom that has been used in biochemical research for decades. This toxin is synthesized as a proprotein on ribosomes 34 to 35 amino acids in length and then cleaved at a specific proline residues by an enzyme belonging to the proline oligopeptidase that is the POP subfamily. Alpha amanitin shows remarkable binding affinity for eukaryotic RNA polymerase 2, slightly binds to RNA polymerase 3 and shows no activity on RNA polymerase 1. It has been employed in determining the form of RNA polymerase that are there in the sample. The translocation of RNA and DNA required for emptying the next round of synthesis is hindered when the toxin binds with the bridging helix of RNA polymerase 2, thereby slowing the rate of transcription by over thousandfold. Alpha amanitin is an inhibitor of POL3. Next is botulinum. The botulinum toxin is a protein consisting of a single polypeptide chain with a molecular weight of 9 lakh D which includes the non-toxic protein hemagglutinin and the 1 lakh 50,000 molecular weight neurotoxic components. To become fully active, the single chain molecule must be cleaved by proteolysis to generate a heavy chain of molecular weight 1 lakh and that is linked by a disulfide bond to a light chain having the molecular weight of 50,000. It is the dichain form of the molecule that is responsible for the toxicity of the toxin. The botulinum toxin enters the preganglionic nerve terminal by endocytosis and binds rapidly and irreversibly to the cell membrane. Once inside the cell, it inhibits the calcium dependent exocytosis thereby preventing release of acetylcholine and resulting in the presynaptic blockade. The toxin acts as a zinc dependent endoprotease to cleave polypeptides that are essential for exocytosis. This diminution of presynaptic function interferes with the cholinergic transmission at all acetylcholine dependent synapses in the peripheral nervous system. There is no effect on the central nervous system or on the exonal conduction. Next are the enterotoxins. The enterotoxins have a particularly marked effect upon the gastrointestinal tract causing vomiting, diarrhea and abdominal pain. The chloride ion permeability also increases in the apical membrane of the intestinal mucosal cells. Also the increase in concentration of calcium ions and c amp intracellularly activates the pores in the membranes. A direct effect is seen due to the formation of the pores on the osmolality of the luminal contents of the intestine. Leakage in lumen takes place due to increase in the chloride ion permeability that is followed by sodium and water movement. Hence it results in secretory diarrhea within a few hours of ingesting the enterotoxin. Several microbial organisms contain the necessary enterotoxin to create such an effect such as the Staphylococcus aureus and E. coli. Next are the ergot alkaloids. Poisoning by the ergot alkaloids produced by the mold claviceps purpurea is usually referred to as the ergotism and is probably the oldest recorded foodborne disease of fungal origin. Colostridium purpurea grows on food grain, particularly rye, during the wet seasons. Symptoms of ergotism include erythema, diarrhea, vomiting, a burning sensation of the limbs and eventually gangrene. Central nervous system effects are convulsions, catalepsy, dullness or maniacal excitement. 
These symptoms can be explained by the pharmacological properties of the agut alkaloids which may cause an alpha adrenergic blockade as well as the serotonin or the 5-hydroxytryptamine or the 5-HT antagonism. The ergot alkaloids ergotamine and ergometrin or ergonorovine have been used for centuries as the therapeutic agents to stimulate uterine contractions and in the treatment of migraine attracts. Overdose with these agents and intoxication with the ergot alkaloids from other sources can be treated symptomatically with potent vasodilated drugs such as sodium nitroprusside and by maintaining adequate circulation. Next, we will study about ocratoxin. Ocratoxin is primarily a kidney toxin but if the concentration is sufficiently high, there can be damage to the liver as well. Ocratoxin is a carcinogen in rats and mice and is suspected as the causative agent of the human disease. Balkan endemic neuropathy which affects the kidneys and often tumors are associated with the disease. The toxin may be still present in products made from grain and the human population is exposed in this manner. Ocratoxin absorbed into the body is distributed at a high concentration in the kidney. It inhibits the synthesis of proteins, DNA and RNA in the cell. It shows the renal toxicity by inhibiting various enzyme activities in the kidney. It is often detected at the same time with citronin, mycotoxin, similarly with the renal toxicity. But there is also a report that additive renal toxicity is not observed by their simultaneous intake. The rumen of ruminescence is highly capable of degrading and converting the ocratoxin A into the phenylalanine and ocratoxin alpha with low toxicity. Therefore, poisoning by ocratoxin is not very much likely to occur. However, calves with immature rumen functions are sensitive to ocratoxin. The levels may accumulate in the body of either humans or animals consuming contaminated food because the ocratoxin is often not rapidly removed from the body and significant amounts may accumulate in blood and other selected tissues. Next, we will study about the phallotoxins. Phallotoxins and amatoxins, the two families of toxic cyclopeptides produced by the blue death cap, that is amanita phalloids, have been the subject of intense biochemical research for decades. Although produced by the same mushroom and of similar structure, the two peptide families have totally different cellular targets. There are seven known phallotoxins, that is phalloidin, prophalloin, phalloin, phallocin, phallocidin, phallacin and phallocin. Phalloidin binds to the polymeric actin thus stabilizing the microfilaments and decreasing the amount of monomeric actin in equilibrium with the filaments. This interaction is in the nanomolar range and highly specific. No other targets for phalloidin in the cell are known. The phallotoxins consist of at least seven compounds all of which are bicyclic heptapeptides that is the seven amino acids. Amatoxins which are the main toxin that is alpha amanitin bind to the RNA polymerase 2 of eukaryotic cells thus inhibiting the transcription process at the nanomolecular concentration. Also this interaction is specific since RNA polymerases are not inhibited at all whereas RNA polymerases 3 are inhibited at aminatin concentrations of 1000 times higher than for RNA polymerases 2. Next are the trichothecenes. These mycotoxins are produced by Fusarium roseum, F. monoliform, F. nivale and F. oxysporum. Other fungal genera that produce similar toxins include myrothecium, trichoderma, cephalosporium, vertice, monosporium and stachybotrys. Other 100 trichothecenes have been identified. The most frequent natural contaminants are the deoxyne 
valinol, diacetoxyscriptinol, HT toxin, nivalinol and the T2 toxin. Contamination of corn, sorghum, barley or wheat with these toxins is not common leading to outbreak of poisoning characterized by abdominal pain, throat irritation, vomiting, diarrhea, vertigo and headache. Trichothecenes toxins are multitoxins affecting many systems. Acute toxicity resembles the damage done by radiation, nitrogen mustard or mitomycin C. Primary damage is to the GI tract and lymphoid and hematopoietic systems. Now I will summarize all that we have studied in this module. The term natural toxins usually refers to potentially toxic organic compounds of natural origin. In contrast to the mineral poisons and synthetic drugs, sources of these toxins range from simple microorganisms to highly developed vertebrates and their chemical structures are correspondingly diverse. An extensive number of substances that comply with the definition of natural toxins have been used for therapeutic purposes. The classic examples are ergotamine, salicylic acid and the cardiac glycosides such as digoxin and penicillin. And the more recent examples are cyclosporin and botulinum toxin. Botulinum and tetanus neurotoxins are produced by strictly anaerobic bacteria belonging to the genus Cholestridium and cause the neuroparalytic syndromes of botulism and tetanus. The cholestridial neurotoxins are the most potent toxins known. Botulinum toxin is likely to be misused as a bioterrorism agent to gain notoriety. The toxin can be easily delivered by aerosol or used to contaminate food or water supplies. If inhaled, the toxin produces clinical symptoms that are similar to foodborne intoxication. Mycotoxin is the name given to a group of potentially toxin substances produced by the certain fungal species that grow on food crops pre or post harvest. Mycotoxins which have given rise to most concerns in terms of risk to health include the aflatoxins, ocratoxins, deoxynivalon, fumosins, trichothecenes and the ergot alkaloids. Each mycotoxins are linked with producing neurotoxic, carcinogenic or the tetratogenic effects together with suppression of the immune system. Poisoning by ergot alkaloids produced by the mold claviceps purpurea is usually referred to as ergotism and is probably the oldest recorded foodborne disease of fungal origin.